Hello to all those in Christian Coffee Time. We're in the book of Malachi, chapter 2, and we're looking at verses uh, 13 to 16. We're going to look at, at the covenant of marriage and uh, have a look at uh, just some things what this is about right here. So get your pens and your papers and you folks out there too. Make sure you write down stuff um, for reference later. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, uh, as we go through this, this um, I had a... a, a um, a request to do do this uh, 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 message, a message like this or something like this, um, and I found uh, um, a really good study. And so this, I'm not taking credit, not to take credit for it. The Spirit of God gets credit because He showed somebody else. So I have a lot of stuff here that I'm going to read to you, but I'm going to, you know, put in my own thoughts and stuff like that in there. So, anyways, we'll get going here. Nonetheless, it is the Word of God, and it is the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Is everybody here all right? Is this loud enough? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. We want to have, uh, um, we, uh, just to note something of the verses we read here, and this will be our springboard into this. We're talking about a covenant this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Note that the Lord refused to accept their offerings. They were bringing sacrifices and such, and the Lord says, I don't hear you anymore. I'm not listening to you guys. Don't bother. You're weeping and crying. I'm not listening to you. Uh, there was a problem with, uh, in this time frame, this is about 460 B.C. And just before that, uh, well, this is the, the last time the Lord would uh, speak and then anything recorded would be, uh, be there for us. And there was that 400 uh, silent years after this. But he's saying to them, uh, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. But we, we must note, it, says, it tells us why. And this is pretty serious stuff. We go back and look at... Um, what had transpired there and these things are supposed to be over into our lives here today but anyway why well it says that the Lord was witness between the man and the wife at their marriage okay you know that today when somebody gets married say you went to the justice of the peace or something uh, you got to have witnesses too you know here it says that God is there God is a witness and he says what they were doing um, what they were doing was wrong. They were divorcing their wives and they were going and marrying the pagan wives round about and bringing them in. And uh, the Lord says, you, break, you broke that covenant, to break the covenant uh, to which the Lord is witness to. And to do that invites his deep displeasure. Um, uh, the, word, the word and the idea covenant is really out of fashion today. Um, we're going to look at covenant versus contract and such. Covenant defined by scripture is a solemn and binding relationship which is meant to be lifelong. Okay? That's the idea of it. And when we come to understand the meaning of this word and what goes with it and such, um, uh, the truth really will set us free and for us to, uh, and will set us free to live as we should in a marriage and not to live as we please. And we should be pleased to live as God has instructed us, okay? Um, the problem in society today is they don't have the fear of God, and they don't know anything about God, and you see marriages falling apart. So we're going to see one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why they do fall apart, and something to help us and encourage us in them today. Marriage today has become a little more than a um, social contract between two parties. In fact, some have contracts that, you know, when we get a divorce, you don't get my money or whatever, you know, the prenuptial stuff, eh? These are contracts. Marriage is treated as a contract. Now, let's just look at the difference here. The Lord was talking about covenant back in um, Malachi. And today, uh, it's treated a, a little more than a social contract between uh, two people. Not a holy covenant between a man and a woman and God. And God. Okay? And it's for a lifetime. Um... The real problem is that people don't understand. And there's a misunderstanding of what a covenant is. In the Old Testament, when they had a covenant, we have a few examples in there of when a covenant was made. Um, they would take a goat or a lamb and they would kill it. And then they would cut it in two pieces. Now, I don't know if it was two halves, like front and back half, or split right down the middle. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if it makes a difference. But the idea was that there was a sacrifice, there was bloodshed, and then you have this dividing of these parts of this animal, of this sacrificial animal. 
And then the ones making the covenant, they've made this, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and then they, two of them, they would walk through between the pieces. Okay? And as they're walking through, they would say this, May God do so to me if I ever break this covenant with you and God. Do what? Cut you into pieces. Okay? May God do this to me if I break this covenant. <clears throat> when we look at that, you get the feeling that uh, covenant in those days um, had a little bit more substance to it than today, didn't it? It was a little bit more serious. That's serious stuff. You know, that's a declaration, you know, before God. You know, if I break this covenant, you know, God can strike me, whatever, you know. Uh, the covenant of marriage is the single most uh, important human bond. And the covenant of, covenant of marriage is based upon the covenant that God has made with us. It's based upon, uh, as we see the Lord, Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 22, and he says uh, about the cup, uh, this is my, my blood that is shed for you. He's making a covenant. God made a new covenant. The Old Testament stuff was, was being set aside. And this new covenant where God makes with mankind, if you accept Christ, if you believe in Christ, if you put your faith in Him, I will cleanse you of your sins. I will declare you to be righteous. righteous. I will make you one of my children. And you will be with me. You will be mine. Uh, the marriage relation lies at the very uh, at the very root of the social system of nations and someone has said I forget exactly how it was said but that you can see uh, what kind of a nation it is if you look at what kind of marriages you have and we have in you take North America marriage is failing okay they're failing all over even amongst Christians they say that the divorce rate is as high or higher why? It's something that, a question that must be asked. And an answer must be given. Now, in Malachi here, it describes a terrible, terrible situation in ancient Israel where uh, uh, the men of Israel were divorcing their wives and marrying pagan wives and bringing them into the land and such. And it was a double sin because they were not only breaking their vows and that covenant, they were also bringing in... Uh, um, uh, pagan influence into the land and God hated that. He says, I hate putting away. And that's divorce. That's divorce. And we see today there's probably, uh, just my estimation, there's hardly a family, is there, that has not been touched in some way with divorce. You know, it's, it's just accepted in the world today. As a result of this compromise, the land was under judgment. And this is quite interesting. We look at this and we see the problems that they were having in the land, in the nation of Israel. And he says, look, I'm not, I'm not listening to you anymore. Why? Because they were divorcing their wives, breaking that covenant. Therefore, the land is under judgment. Do you suppose our land's under judgment? Just a thought, that's all. Just a thought. As a result of this compromise, the land was under judgment. And God explains why he no longer accepted the offering. Because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. Get that? The wife of thy covenant. So we see that problem that they were having, and the Lord backing away from them and saying, This is wrong, and I'm not going to bless you because you're doing this thing in the land. Marriage is a covenant, not a contract. And we're going to just talk about that for a minute. And herein is, I think, the, it doesn't matter what I think, herein is the problem in failing marriages. Or this could be the problem in failing marriages today. No fear of God, no knowledge of God, what God has said, what God expects. Let's just have a look at a, at a few things here. <clears throat> You've all been to uh, weddings and such. And when you uh, come in, in a, in a, it doesn't have to be in a church building. I've done weddings outside, and the same practice takes place that the family of the groom sits on one side and the family of the bride sits on the other side. You know where that comes from? We just talked about it. Well, let's talk about it a little further. 
when you see them coming in, the, uh, the groom goes up and, and the fellas with him, and then the bride comes in, the other ladies, and they walk up between these two parties, okay? These two families sitting on opposite, opposite sides of the auditorium, this provides a covenant setting. See, marriage is established uh, by God as a covenant, not a contract. She is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. In the Hebrew word, which I am not going to attempt to uh, pronounce, I cannot, but it means this. In the sense of cutting, a compact made by passing between pieces of flesh. The word is pictured in God's covenant with Abraham. Before the covenant was made, Abraham, according to God's instruction, took selected sacrifice in Genesis chapter 15 and divided them in the midst. And it came to pass when the sun went down that it was dark. Behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made covenant with Abraham. You see, when God brought the uh, Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, he established a covenant with them and had them pass through the pieces of the calf and seated families and friends on each side of the auditorium symbolizes the sacrifices which they have made in order that the bride and groom could come and enter into this covenant. And I have a whole series of uh, wedding traditions and their origins come from uh, the uh, uh, Jewish ceremonies and covenants and such. It's interesting. It's not just a, a thing whereby, okay, let's just keep these families apart because well, they don't get along or something. No, it's got a deeper meaning than that. It's it, The meaning is that it comes from that idea of the covenant pieces and walking through the middle. That's what it's about. And I was thinking of the one church that we know of that doesn't have that center aisle. They just got great big long rows. I guess they can't make covenants there in that building. <laughs> but anyways, the point is this. How does a covenant differ from a contract? A covenant is based on trust between parties, and a contract is based on distrust. Okay? A covenant is based on unlimited responsibility, and a contract is based on limited liability. A covenant cannot be broken if new circumstances occur. A contract can be voided by mutual consent. Nice to have that breeze today, but, okay, let's go on. So they were uh, um, divorcing their wives and causing the land to have troubles. And we just saw there, just briefly, there's a big difference between a covenant and a contract. In a contract, two people make an agreement contingent upon the performance of the other person. Like, for instance, you, get, you have a... How many have ever had a toothache and you had to go to the dentist or something like that? Yeah, okay, so you call him up, okay, make an appointment, and he'll fix that, and what's your part? And you'll pay him, and you'll pay dearly. <laughs> but nonetheless, you have made a contract. Or if your car needs fixing, you make a contract with the mechanic, you fix it, and I'll pay. He says, you pay, and I'll fix it, okay? And you make that deal. If either of the people renege on their promise or their responsibility in the contract, the contract falls apart. You're not going to pay me? I'm not fixing your car. But see what happens when people bring that contract into the marriage uh, 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 scene. And that's how it's treated as a contract. If somebody else does something wrong, okay, that's it. Let's just go on here. So we see <clears throat> both parties have a part to do under the contract. If you don't do your part, I won't do my part, and the contract is broken. But a covenant is not like that. A covenant is a sacred promise. It does not rest on what you do. It rests solely on one's own faithfulness and commitment. A covenant means, I will do this no matter what you do. No matter what you do, I will fulfill my part. When a couple stands and makes a public commitment to each other, that's not a contract, that's a covenant. A sacred and holy promise witnessed by God himself. Someone has said that, uh, and I don't know who it was, someone has said that uh, there are three kinds of love. There is, I love you if, or 
I love you because, or I love you in spite of. The first two, I love you if or because, are conditional. I love you if you fill in the blank now, if you stop smoking, if you stop snoring, uh, if you, you fill in the blank, whatever. Or the other one, I love you because, because you're smart or good looking or whatever. Like James Knox says, you know, that's not going to last forever. He says, go down to the nursing home and have a look. It doesn't last forever, you know. It changes. I love you because you're beautiful or whatever. Okay, that's going to change, you know. How many find as they get on in, 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 in years that maybe you forget things and uh, maybe we're not quite as, not, it's not smart, but things change. People change outwardly and inwardly. Uh, I love you if you stop smoking. or See, there's conditions. This, uh, this is contract love. The third one, I love you in spite of, is covenant love. I love you in spite of your weaknesses, in spite of your own faults, in spite of the fact that you may not always love me. Sounds like God's love for us, doesn't it? You get that? That the covenant that he made in his blood, in Luke 22 there, that's what he's saying. He says, it's not conditional upon what you do. When you trust in Jesus Christ, you are mine, you belong to me, and I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's eternal security in the Bible. And people say you can lose your salvation. Don't understand the covenant and God's part of it. They don't understand the blood of Christ and that whole thing. He says, no matter what you do and how you behave, how many here behave absolutely right and perfect all the time? You on the camera there, you folks, get some comment time. Put your hand up. <laughs> we don't always do right. We don't always behave right. We always do some stupid thing. Do you find that to be a truth? Please put your hand up. So I'm not alone. Okay, look at that, everybody. Yeah. But you see that, the difference? Covenant love says, I'm going to love you anyways. That's the love of God for us in Jesus Christ. That's our Savior. That's our salvation, folks. Right there. I like that. We can stop right there. I like That's really good. That is to be brought over into the marriage. Uh, God expects all men everywhere to uh, repent and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. He, he's not willing that any should perish, meaning then that it's okay with him if everybody on the face of the earth was a Christian. That'd be just dandy. But that's not the way it is. It's the way it should be. It's not the way it is. But this uh, covenant love, that's the only kind of love that will last a lifetime. Conditional love won't make it. Because what if he or she doesn't lose weight? doesn't stop smoking, doesn't stop snoring. What if he or she can't think straight anymore? What then? Will you still love her then? Will you still stand by his side? See, God's love is covenant love. It doesn't depend on us. And that should be the same in the marriage. When people are standing up to get marriage and saying their vows and such, they're making a covenant. And the way it's supposed to be is... It's not dependent on your performance. We see when we look at these things, we can see herein, as we already mentioned, herein is the basis for eternal security and salvation. God has made a covenant and he will fulfill his part. He will do that. Likewise, the covenant love that holds a marriage together is a love that doesn't depend on the other person, on the other person's performance or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Mr. Spruill, R.C. Spruill said, Marriages are our closest human relationships and should emulate most nearly our fellowship with God. The rise and fall of marriage in a society acts as a barometer by which to measure the godliness of the society. Let's carry on. So, marriage being a covenant... And in Ephesians chapter 5, and you write that down and read it later, and get some more info on this, in Ephesians chapter 5, we see the analogy of the earthly marriage, the relationship between Jesus Christ and the believer, Jesus Christ and the church, which is called his bride. The bond between Jesus and his bride forms the new covenant, covenant the spiritual reality of which human marriages are a type, or are a picture. 
He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, and this is supposed to be how it is within the marriage. So we see that a covenant establishes a bond between two parties, and in this case, between husband and wife. And secondly, a covenant establishes obligations and fidelity and submission. Thirdly, a covenant is public and not private. And it's a contract before witnesses. Covenants, established, covenants establish relationships publicly and create accountability. If two people are simply living together, either partner may abandon the other partner without any accountability. In a wedding, there's a point there where when, I haven't done weddings in a long time, but I would uh, make a charge to each one. And then to the people in attendance, you're not there just to get a meal, you know. You're there as witnesses and ones that are supposed to be there for these, like I guess, say young people, they're not always young. These people getting married, you're accountable to help them and be there for them and watch over them too got those people in your lives okay family most of all uh, <clears throat> where are we here when two people marry God stands as a witness to the marriage and living together does not constitute marriage and having a physical relationship a relations does not constitute marriage there must be public vows there must be a covenant made there must be witnesses present Marriage is a covenant between one man and one woman for life, under God, before God, witnessed by God. And there again, there is the problem of our times, the times in which we live. There's no fear of God. There's no knowledge of God. So we see everything crumbling. Perhaps this small study uh, in the marriage covenant will help all the hearers will help all of us just to rethink and be refreshed in our thinking in these matters to understand the seriousness and the blessings attached to the marriage covenant. Let us try and remember the main points that we touched on here. First of all, number one, God is a witness, the prime witness in a marriage covenant. Go back to Malachi. That's what he said. Secondly, Marriage is a covenant between a man and a woman, not a contract. Thirdly, the problem Israel was having, in particular God's refusal to accept their sacrifice, refusal to accept their prayers, was because of their divorces. They had broken the covenant of, of their marriage, and then problems ensued because God was not pleased. Number four, let us remember our part and do our part in love no matter what the other one does, our husband or wife, no matter what. If we have that mindset that I must continue, the love of God must be there and not hold the other person in some kind of, uh, uh, I don't know the word, uh, hold them accountable or, or you must get this fixed. And this goes further than the marriage as well. As we deal with other people, like as believers, as Christians, we deal with people. The Bible has a lot to say about them seeing Christ in us. And that idea of the covenant love and that they're going to be there for someone no matter what. It should, it should be there for as we're dealing just with our day-to-day -day dealings with people. I know there's some people that rub you the wrong way and they're difficult to get along with or whatever and they well, I'm not going to go anywhere near that person or whatever. I'll never do anything for that or whatever. But God says, I'm going to be this way. I'm going to overlook that for your benefit. The love of God overlooks those things. And that may be not, maybe not the right word to use, but, but let us remember our part. And uh, lastly, the, the fifth thing, let us see the covenant of God in salvation as we look at these things and see that uh, he makes a covenant with us when we believe he saves us by grace through faith belief in christ he keeps us by grace and 
every one of us have experienced that in abundance. Let us be uh, filled with grace ourselves that the other people in our lives and around us will experience that very thing. This world needs to see and hear Jesus Christ. They need to see it in us as well as from our lips. And not just from our lips. They need to experience it. God will do His part. He will do His part to keep us. Anyway, there we're all done. That's it. Just a few things for us to think about. A covenant is very serious stuff. You go back and read that bit in Malachi and read it over and over and familiarize yourself with it if you're not. Very important stuff. It has to do with our relationship with God. It has to do with our relationship with our spouses. It has to do with our relationship with every person we come in contact with through the day. Amen?